We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. This is Side Hustle Show 212, Micro Habits. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show, where aspiring part-time entrepreneurs learn how to turn their side hustle dreams into reality. Because your 9 to 5 may make you a living, but your 5 to 9 makes you alive. And now, your host, Nick Loper. What's up, what's up? Nick Loper here. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show. Special solo show for you today. And I kicked it off with what I think is one of the most overused quotes in the history of history and definitely in the history of online business. And uh, it's overused because it's good, at least the first part. Aristotle, I think, was onto something for sure. We are what we repeatedly do. I agree with that 100%. The issue I have is with the second part. Excellence, then, is not an act but a habit. There's no such habit called excellence. You can't wake up tomorrow and start your morning routine with a quick session of excellence before you go grab breakfast. The problem is we fill our days with a lot of less than excellent things. And sometimes that's intentional and fully conscious. Yeah, I'm going to have that donut and grande frappuccino. Yeah, I'm going to kill two hours watching The Blacklist on Netflix. Not that any of that isn't excellent in its own right, just for the context of health and productivity and building a side hustle. Maybe not so much. But other times, it's more accidental. Like when you find yourself 10 years deep into a career, you're just kind of meh about. Or when you find yourself at 30, 40, 50 years old, and you're in debt, and you realize a newborn baby has a higher net worth than you. Now, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately about setting New Year's resolutions or goals for the year, which I think is only natural when the calendar flips. But I really had a hard time coming up with a smart goal or a set of smart goals for the year that I was really excited about. It's easy to pick a number out of the sky, like I want to make a million dollars or I want to reach 100,000 subscribers or I want to become a number one New York Times bestseller. And those kind of goals are great if they motivate you and you can reverse engineer a path to get there. But on the flip side of the big, hairy, audacious goals like these, to borrow a phrase from Jim Collins, is the micro habit. And that brings us back to Aristotle. We are what we repeatedly do. I've seen the power of consistent execution firsthand, and this podcast is probably my best, most recent example of that. It started out completely as a side project experiment. It costs less than $100, and over the last three and a half years, I'm not exaggerating when I say it has been life-changing. So if you found yourself in kind of the same boat with everyone around you sharing their resolutions and their you know super ambitious goals for the year and not quite knowing what you should be aiming at yourself, I invite you to consider the micro habit as an alternative. Ready? Let's do it. This episode draws inspiration from a couple sources. The first is a blog post I read in December called Giving Up My Goals to Focus on Habits. It was published on a site called MakeSmarterDecisions.com. Now, the author of this site doesn't share her name, though she is a fellow member of the FinCon community, and that's how I discovered the article. Let me read one passage of it here. I think a lot of people are highly motivated when they set goals and probably have a lot of success when they get started on the goal. But Jim Ryan, a three-time Olympic runner and the first high schooler ever to break four minutes in the mile, has a great quote about this. Motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. I love that. The second source is a book called Mini Habits, which admittedly I haven't read, but I'm going to credit Alex Barker's uh, 66-Day Experiment podcast. He talks about this book in season one of the show, and out of respect to the author Stephen Guise, I'm calling this uh, episode Micro Habits instead of Mini. So what's a micro habit? Let me talk about the three characteristics of micro habits. First, it's got to be related to something you care about. Otherwise, what would be the point, right? So in my case, I've broken down my micro habits for the year, and I'll get into those in a little bit, uh, under the areas of health, wealth, and family. Uh, criteria number two, it's got to be something you can do in under one minute, like less than 60 seconds. That's what makes them micro versus producing the podcast each week, which takes several hours. Criteria number three is it's got to be too small to fail at. Like you would be embarrassed if you couldn't check the box each day to say you got it done. That's what we're aiming for for these, especially when we're starting out. So why record this episode? Number one, I think it might be helpful uh, for people listening. And number two, for accountability. That's the selfish reason as I'm counting on you to to hold me to these. So let's uh, let's talk about the habits, the micro habits themselves. These are the ones that I've set up for myself this month in lieu of big hairy goals or, or New Year's resolutions. So 
So under the category of health, I've got three habits here. One push-up per day, one squat per day, and to floss one tooth per day. Now with each of these, obviously once you're down on the ground doing one push-up, you're probably likely to do a few more. You're probably likely to floss more than one tooth once you've gone through the trouble of getting the floss out. And the reason for structuring it in this way instead of doing, oh, I want to do 100 push-ups a day is, you know, that's more intimidating. That's harder to do. But, hey, anybody can do one push-up. Anybody can floss one tooth. And that's um, an area that I've struggled with constantly. I think we talked about that um, before on the show. Under the category of wealth, the habit that I have here, the micro habit that I have here is to do one proactive thing before email. Email is something that I continue to struggle with. It is a a 10-year habit of just leaving the Gmail tab open all day. And I can tell you, even from the first week of doing this, like it feels great. Like I've gotten a head start on my day, like, you know, doing doing one thing to move my business forward before diving into reactive mode and uh, and looking at my inbox. On the family side, I have something I call 30 second time, which uh, actually stems from a study that I read several years ago that said even just a, a 20 to 30 second hug uh, with someone you love could release, I don't know how to say it, oxytocin, <laughs> could improve your mood, your happiness, and even your overall health. The research indicates that these extended hugs create biochemical and physiological reactions that reduce stress, lower the risk of heart disease, that's awesome, fight infections, and boost your immune system. And initially, my wife, Britton, was not super on board with this. She's like, this is kind of lame. Why are we just standing here? But I think she's gotten uh, she's gotten on board with it. Maybe she's starting to feel this as well. So when I when we're in this embrace, right, like I can feel my, my body and my mind calming down, you know, just kind of breathing deeply and taking gratitude in, in what we have. And we have each other in this life that we built together. And there's this element of, you know, no matter what happens, I've got your back. It's really a powerful thing. It's grounding. And it's really comforting and easily worth 30 seconds, right? <laughs> Even if you don't believe in any of that stuff, hey, you know, what, what could go wrong? 30 seconds. So those are my five micro habits. It was one push-up, one squat, floss, one tooth, do one proactive thing before checking email and 30-second time. Now, you're welcome to borrow those or come up with your own. Just remember the rules related to something that you care about, something you can do in under one minute and too small to not do. So other examples might include, you know, drinking a glass of water right when you get up, reading one page of a book, making the bed, finishing your shower with cold water, you know, doing a one minute meditation. The significance of any of these micro habits by itself is probably negligible. And I'll be the first to admit that even all five of them added up might not make a huge impact when you look at only the habits themselves, right? Just doing this isn't going to make you a six pack. It's not going to make you a millionaire. But where I believe the magic is, is in the tiny feeling of accomplishment in having done them. It's like a mental hack. I said this thing was important to me. I said I'd do it. And look, I did it. I think that can build momentum to bigger and better things because you've taken that first step in convincing yourself you're the type of person that takes action, follows through, gets it done. My friend Mihao, who's featured in the book The Slight Edge, calls this the identity habit, and it's probably more powerful than any other individual action. I think setting up these too small to fail micro habits can be a stepping stone to building your own identity habit, that you're the kind of person that does fill in the blank. Take the cold shower thing, for example. Potential health benefits aside, it's a pretty loud reminder that you're going to accomplish what you set out to, even if it's uncomfortable in the near term. So why only five? The idea here is to set yourself up for success. Remember, too small to fail. If I pick 25 different things to do every day, all of a sudden that becomes overwhelming and stressful and intimidating. And now maybe I don't check the box. One quick note about structure. A lot of resolutions are about what you're not going to do, what you're not allowed to do. I'm going to cut out sugar. I'm going to cut out carbs. I'm going to cut out alcohol. But these micro habits, at least in my case, are structured in a way that they're about doing Uh, something positive to do rather than what not to do. And there's uh, some research cited in a book called The Power of Habit that talks about triggers and rewards. So if you want to make a micro habit related to something you want to quit, I think you could frame it as a trigger and reward situation. For example, if you want to cut an hour of TV time in the evening, you can position TV like the reward, like I'm going to do one proactive thing toward my side hustle and then relax with TV. Or an even smaller example would be like if you want to quit that mid-morning donut, you know, start a micro habit of a mid-morning celery snack instead. 
Okay, let's talk about tracking now, because what gets measured gets managed, right? Previously, I've tried to keep track of habits either in my head or in a Google spreadsheet, but I'm trying something new this time, actually inspired by my brother. He recommended a physical sheet of paper taped to the wall by my computer. I can't help but see it for several hours a day, and it's a constant reminder of my commitment to these micro habits. I'll take a picture and uh, post it with the show notes so you can see what it looks like uh, for this episode at sidehustlenation.com slash microhabits. The reason I think, or at least I hope this will be effective, is it kind of visually gamifies it for me. If each day has an X by it, I don't want to break that streak, especially with something as embarrassingly small as missing one push-up. Now my only job is to not break that chain, and borrowing that phrase from Jerry Seinfeld's advice to a young comic, to make a habit of writing one joke every day and then not breaking the chain. That's your only job. So what's next? These are the micro habits I'm working on this month, and I might add to them or try different ones for the rest of the year, but I'm excited to give this new framework a shot. Hopefully you found some value and insight from this episode, and I'm counting on you to hold me accountable as well. Let me know what micro habits you come up with in the comments for this episode at sidehustlenation.com slash micro habits, and I'll do my best to circle back and hold you to those as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, let's go out there and make something happen, and I'll catch you in the next edition of The Side Hustle Show. Hustle on. Thanks for listening to The Side Hustle Show at www.sidehustlenation.com. 